Hi guys, welcome to today's tutorial. In a series of upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how to download different kinds of geospatial data available freely. In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to make a geological map in QGIS. So what are geological maps? Geological maps are uniquely suited to solving problems involving earth resources, hazard, and environment. Geologic maps represent the distribution of different types of rocks and superficial deposits, as well as location of geologic structures such as faults and folds. Geologic mapping is a highly interpretative scientific process that can produce a range of map products for different uses, which include access to groundwater quality and contamination risks, predicting earthquakes, volcanoes, and landslide hazards, characterizing energy and mineral resources and the extraction costs, waste repository siting, land management and land use planning, and general education. So let's start today's exercise. The first thing we need to do is we need to get geological data for our area of interest. So for in this case, I'm going to show you where we can get freely available geological data. So I'm going to open my browser. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome. And I'm going to type on my browser, Wild Geological Maps. And I hit enter. And I will select the Wild Geologic Maps dash USGS. And it will take me to a browser where I can actually get my past geological data in form of shape files. So you can actually see the different kinds of data, like there was one for Afghanistan, one for the entire of Africa, Arabian Peninsula, Arctic, Asia. And these are mostly in form of shape files. You can also have just a look at the metadata Bangladesh, Caribbean, Europe former Soviet Union, Gulf of Mexico, Iran, North America, South America. So you can actually download uh, the data that you need for your region. So in this case, I'm going to go to Africa. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download uh, the shape files. I want the official geology of Africa, so I'm going to select the shape files. It will prompt me where I'm supposed to save, so I'm going to look for where I'm going to, I'm going to save it in my computer, somewhere in my computer. And I'm going to save all my data in my geological data folder, which is currently empty. I'm going to click on uh, new folder, Africa. Then I'm going to save it within the African folder because I might be downloading now for different regions. Then I'll open the folder. And I will also extract this data in this folder here. So now I have my folder that has the shape files. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to also download the geological provinces of Africa, which is also a shape file. And I'm going to save it in the same same folder where my African data is. Can save, then start downloading. I'm going to open the folder again, and I'm also going to extract the provinces in my folder. So those are the two geological data that I'm going to be using in this exercise. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also download the publication so that I can also read more about this data. So I'm going to select the entire publication. And in this page, you can actually find the links to these geological maps. So I'm going to download the sheet two that has the, it's a full plot size. I'm going to that I'm also going to save it in my geological data for Africa and I'm going to create a new folder and call it documents and I'm going to save it in the folder so I'm going to open the folder and it's a PDF file, so I'm going to open this file so that I can actually be able to just look at it and read the kind of information it has. You can also download all the other documents to just look at what information is within these, but I'm going to just use whatever I have downloaded for our analysis. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up QGIS. I'm going to bring in the two layers that we had actually downloaded for geological data in QGIS, so I'm going to go to layer, add layer, 
and the vector layers have to add vector layer and i'm going to browse for where the data is it's under the geological data africa then there is the geological data the first layer i'm going to add then i'm also going to add the next layer which is uh, the province layer so geological data i'm going to click on close so i have the two data for my region of interest now for the first one is the different provinces i'm going to bring it down and then two there is the geological data so i'm going to open the attribute table to just see what kind of information you have so i'm going to click on the layer and then open the attribute table and you can actually see we have some data here and what you're interested in is the glg the geology of the different uh, areas and they're in different codes so that's why it's very important for you to download the documentation so that you can actually know what these codes stand for by looking at the legend then we also have the province data so let me just open the attribute table to see what we have and you can actually see we have the names of the different basins and uh, that is what is useful to us in this exercise so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm much, actually i can actually just do symbolization for this uh, data here very very quickly but then later on we're going to just make a map of just our region of interest so i'm going to also show you how to download the data for your region of interest like let's say maybe a country in africa so in this lesson you're going to be using ethiopia so i'm going to show you how to download the dark boundaries of ethiopia from a different site also so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open the attribute table which actually going to symbolize our data using the glg code the, the glg attribute so you need to right click on the layer go to properties then symbology then instead of a single symbol you're going to use a categorized symbol then the value we are going to be categorizing is the glg then you're going to just be using this uh, symbol and you're going to use random colors for the different categories so i'm going to click on classify and then all the categories have actually been classified using uh, the different symbols for the h2 i know is water so i'm going to change it to blue so it actually makes sense so I'm going to just readjust the colors later on. Then I'm going to click on apply, okay. And now we have a very beautiful representation of the different geology of the different regions in Africa. We are going to turn off the province layer first so that you can actually be able to visualize the data without any hindrance. So this is actually the geological data of the different African countries. So the next thing I want to do is I want to select a region of interest and in this case I'm going to be using the, the administrative unit of Ethiopia. So in order for me to get these uh, administrative units I'm going to go to my browser again. I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to go to humanitarian data exchange center. Then I'm going to select the humanitarian data exchange from uh, my browser then i'm going to search for ethiopia administrative boundaries ethiopia in and then now i can see there's uh, some ethiopian sub national administrative divisions i'm going to select the shape file like that Then I'm going, it's going to open a new page and I'm going to download the administrative divisions in forms of shape, a zip shape file. So I'm going to click on download. And I'm going to save it in the same, same folder where I actually had the African data. I'm going to save these Ethiopian administrative division shape files. I'm going to open the folder. And I'm going to unzip that data in my African data folder. And now I have the administrative uh, boundaries of Ethiopia. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now load these administrative boundaries into QGIS. So I'm going to go to QGIS and I'm going to add them as vector layers. So I'm going to go to layer, add layer, add vector layer. 
I'm going to browse for the Ethiopian boundaries. And I'm going to select the second, the first administrative boundary of Ethiopia, which is admin zero. And now I have a shape file of Ethiopia. I'm going to zoom to layer. So what we want to do is we want to get the geological data for the whole Ethiopia. I'm going to just change the styles to make it hollow. Now I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to give it an outline. So I'm going to scroll down and look for outline black or outline blue. So I'm going to use outline black. And now we have a very nice outline of Ethiopia on top of our geological data. So we're going to clip out the data for Ethiopia from the rest of uh, Africa. So to do that, you're going to go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tool, then you're going to select Clip. And we're going to be using our input layer as the geology of the whole of Africa. And our overlay layer, which is the Clip layer, is going to be the admin. So make sure you select that. Then you agree to just create a temporary file for this first. I'm going, to, I'm, going, I'm going to click on run. And the clip is finished in 81 seconds. So I'm going to click on close. And now I have new layer overlaying on top of Ethiopia. So I'm going to just uncheck the other data that we have so that you can just have, it can remain with the clip layer. So I'm going to just confirm if my data has been clipped well. I'm going to open the attribute table of my data and you can see we have the GLG. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, style my, my layer, my new layer here. So I'm going to go to properties. Then I'm going to go to symbology. Then I'm going to categorize it using the GLG. Then I'm going to use random colors. I'm going to click on classify. So now we have uh, a few colors. So I'm going to just uh, look at what I have and I can see that I have the whole H2O, which is water. I'm going to change it to blue color. Get a shade of blue. You can actually type the name you want to see on the legend. Like for example, H2O is water. So I can say water. And then J, I have to come here on the the map legend provided by the person who did the geology and i can just confirm by looking at that from here so you can see they have the under their legend they have the name the short form and the full name so you can actually do that i'm going to go back to QGIS and I'm going to click on uh, apply okay and now we have our very nice geological uh, data for Ethiopia so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a geological map out of this to get the map we're going to go to uh, project new print layout I'm going to call it Ethiopia geological Okay, and our, on our blank screen here, I'm going to add the map. So I'm going to click on add item, add map. And I'm going to add the map of Ethiopia in our area. Then I'm going to resize it to make sure that it fits well on the screen. I'm also going to make sure that my map has a nice frame, so I'm going to select frame. Then I'm going to add the next element, which is the, the title of my map. So I'm going to go to add label. I'm going to add a label somewhere. I'm going to call it Ethiopia Geological Map. I'm going to change the font to maybe say 20.
Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another arrow. And I'm going to look at the collection of arrows so that I can change my not arrow. Next, I'm going to add scale. I'm also going to change the kind of scale that I'm going to be using. I'm going to make sure that it has a, a very nice back, a white background. Then I'm going to add the legend. And uh, I'm going to just uh, edit my legend so that it fit, it suits whatever I'm trying to show. I'm going to remove auto updates. I don't need all these others in my legend, so I'm going to select all, all these from my legend and delete them. And then I'm going to just change some things here, like this is the admin boundary. And I'm going to make it have a frame, the legend. After that, you can actually just uh, export our map as a PDF or a JPEG for, to, to be able to view it. And now we can open our map using a PDF. That's it for today's exercise. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more on GIS, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'm happy you're here. See you in my next video.